Hi everybody, this is the week five midterm review. My name is Bill Troutman and I am your algebra instructor. Uh, let's get right into it. I think we have about 27, 28 problems to do here. Uh, looks like we got about 28 problems to do. So that is a ton. First problem, find the slope of this line. Well, we all know that if we have the equation y equals mx plus b in this form, the slope is the number next to x. If you get y by itself, the slope will be the number next to x. So my goal is to get y by itself, get rid of the 7, and get rid of the x. Um, so the 7 is multiplying times a y. The x is adding, so we want to get the add and subtracts over to the other side first when we solve. So the opposite of adding x is subtracting x to both sides. So we're going to subtract x to both sides. x minus x is 0. We're just left with 7y. On the right-hand side, we're left with a negative x minus 2. I put the x first because the form is mx plus b. Next, I need to get rid of the 7. The goal is to get the y by itself. So I want to get rid of the 7. It's multiplying times a y. So I'm going to divide both sides. And when I divide both sides, I mean each term by 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1y. Another way of writing 1y is just y. And then I have negative x over 7. Another way of writing negative x over 7 is negative 1x over 7. Do you see how it's just negative 1 7th x uh, minus 2 over 7. So the slope is the number in front. Uh, and you really have to have that 1 in front of the y there. You don't see it up here, but it's an invisible 1, so it's a negative 1 7th. My slope, m stands for slope, is a negative 1 over 7. It's not the x. The x is not part of the slope. It's the number in front of the x. Okay, so that's the first question. First problem. Keep on going. Keep on going. Solve for x. In other words, we want x on one side, everything else to the other. Um, first thing we're going to do is distribute. So there's a 3 outside this parentheses. I'm going to distribute that. 3 times x is 3x. Three, 3 times a negative 2 is a negative 6. I'm going to bring everything else down. Here, there's a negative in front of the parentheses. You have to distribute the negative sign. It's like saying there's a negative 1 in front of the parentheses. So it's 6 minus 1, 6 t minus 1, and the negative 1 is times the parentheses. So it's a negative 1 times x, which is a negative x. Negative 1 times a positive 5 is a negative 5. And then we have that 6 that comes down. You see, I, all I did was distribute this invisible negative 1 that was there. If there's a minus in front of a parentheses, you have to distribute the negative sign. Uh, so step two, we're going to combine like terms on each side. Combine on each side. Uh, this side, I have a 3x and a 3x. That is 6x. And then we have a minus 6. The 3x is add since they're both x's. Over here, I have 6 minus 5 numbers. 6 minus 5 is 1. So I have a negative x uh, plus 1. See, those two form the 1. Um... Step three, we want to get all x's to one side. I'm going to take this minus x to the other side. It's a minus x. The only way to get it to the other side is plus x. Plus x. Okay, over here, they turn to zero. Um, so I'm left with one on this side. 6x plus 1x, once again, it's an invisible x. 6x plus 1x is 7x, and I have a minus 6, okay? Now, once again, I'm solving for x. I'm trying to get x by itself. I have to get rid of the 7, and I have to get rid of the 6. Um, you always take the add and subtracts to the other side. It's a minus 6. I'm going to plus 6. That turns to 0. 
left with 7x on the right hand side and 1 plus 6 is 7 on the left. Now I need to get rid of the 7. It's 7 times x, so I'm going to divide both sides by 7. Divide both sides by 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1x, and 7 divided by 7 here is 1. So the answer to this problem is x equals 1. Okay, next problem. Uh, find the equation for the line. Um, Burger King. No, it's not bigger. Uh, what do you call it? I forgot what you call this thing. There we go. Want a burger. <laughs> uh, find the equation for the line. Remember, we want an equation that looks like this. Y equals mx plus b. If you've been watching the review, the help videos, We've done one just like this. So we need two things to find the equation for a line. We need to know what M equals, and we need to know what B equals. Okay, two things we need. Once we have these two things, we're really done. So to find M, we're going to use the slope formula. To find slope, when we have two points, it's Y1, or it's Y2, minus Y1, divided by X2, minus x1 okay so this is the first point this is the second point this is x of the first point this is y of the first point x of the second point and y of the second point so we're just gonna use this formula I'm gonna put parentheses y2 is negative 17 y1 is 4 x2 is 3 and x1 is negative 4 so on the top negative 7 minus 4 is a negative 21 on the bottom 3 minus a minus 4 minus a minus changes to a plus 3 plus 4 is 7 negative 21 divided by 7 is a negative 3 so our slope is a negative 3 we know what M is so we're halfway there now we just have to find B to find B we take any one of these two points we have two points take any one I'm gonna take the first one and this is the X and this is the Y I'm gonna plug it right back into our equation Y equals MX plus B I'll put it right here. Y equals MX plus B. We know Y, if I go up here to the equation, Y is 4. The M, the slope we figured was negative 3. X is also negative 4 up here in the equation, uh, up here in the point. And we're looking for B. Uh, negative 3 times negative 4 is a positive 12. Take the 12 to the other side. It's a plus 12, so I'm going to subtract 12 to both sides. Subtract 12 to both sides. There, turn 0, and I get B equals 4 minus 12, which is a negative 8. So B equals a negative 8. And we're done. We just plug them back into this equation, and we're done. Do you see Y equals my slope is negative 3? Y equals my slope is a negative 3x and B is a negative 8. Do you see? We just plugged the M and the B back in and there's our equation. You find M, you find B, plug it back into the equation without the X and the Y and we're good to go. Solve the system of equations. Okay, so... We could use substitution or we could use elimination. I'm going to try to use elimination here. Okay. Um, 
to use the elimination, remember you need the x's to be the same, one positive and one negative, or the y's to be the same, one positive or ne one negative. Well, neither one, neither the x's or the y's are the same. So I have to multiply one of the rows, one or more rows, to make it the same. If if you notice here in this row. I have a 9 and I have a 3. If I just multiply this top row by negative 3, then 3 times negative 3 is a negative 9, and we have the same 9s, but one positive, one negative. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply. Uh, you have to recognize that. How do I know to do that? Well, I know to do that because I want to try to get either the x's or y's the same. So I'm going to multiply the top row by negative 3. Watch what happens. Negative 3 times 4 is a negative 12x. Negative 3 times 3 is a negative 9y. Negative 3 times 5 is a negative 15. Now, the second row, I'm not going to do nothing to it. It's going to be 5x plus 9y equals 1. Now, do you see how the y's are exactly the same but opposite signs? If I add these, remember the addition method, sometimes called the elimination method. If I add them now, negative 12 uh, plus 5x is a negative 7x. Nine, negative 9y and a positive 9y cancel. Negative 15 and a positive 1 equals a negative 14. If I divide both sides by negative 7, because I need to get the 7 to the other side, I get x equals negative 14 divided by negative 7 is a positive 2. x equals 2. Do you see we're trying to find two answers, the x and the y. We have the x. x equals 2. Now we just have to find a y. To find a y, you take any one of your original equations. I'm going to take this first one. 4x plus 3y equals 5. And you see, I already know x is 2, so I'm going to put a 2 into here. 4 times 2 is 8. Uh, take the y to the other side. I mean, take the 8 and the 3 to the other side. First, you take the 8. You always take the add and subtract to the other side first. It's a plus 8, so I'm going to minus 8. Five minus eight is a negative three. Divide both sides by three. I need to get the y by itself, so I need to get rid of the three. Divide both sides by three. And I get y equals negative one. I have my x, I have my y. X is two, y is negative one. This is my solution. Moving right along, we got a ton of problems here. Put in standard form. Remember, standard form was AX plus BY equals C, where A has to be positive, and you cannot have no fractions. That's standard form. The A, and that's a Y, by the way. A, the X and the Y have to be on one side. The number without the X or Y have to be on the other no fractions are allowed, and A has to be positive. Uh, since no fractions have to be allowed, the denominator is 3. I'm going to multiply everything by 3. You always multiply everything by the denominator. Watch what happens. I'm going to multiply it by 3, and we'll multiply it by 3. 3 times Y is 3Y. 3 times 2 thirds, if you put it up here, 3 times two-thirds. This three's on the bottom and that three's on top. They cancel. So I'm left with a two x left over on top. You see those threes canceled. And then seven times three is 21. Okay, so now I need to get the x to the other side. Remember standard form, x and y on the same side. So I need to get the two x to the other side. I'm going to subtract two x. I'm going to subtract two x. 
Here it turns 0. So the right-hand side is just 21. The left-hand side is negative 2x plus 3y. Okay, the x and y are on one side, and I don't have fractions. However, a, the number in front of x, has to be positive. So this is not standard form. If you ever have the number in front of x as negative like it is here, just multiply everything by negative 1. I'm going to multiply each term by negative 1. Negative times a negative is a positive 2x. Negative 1 times 3y is a negative 3y. And negative 1 times 21 is a negative 21. Just multiply everything by negative 1. And now the x is positive. I don't care if the number in front of the y is negative or the other number is negative. The number in front of the x cannot be negative. This here is standard form. X and Y are on one side. There are no fractions. And the number in front of X is positive. Uh, this problem is just solving for X. I need to get X on one side, everything else to the other. Uh, get the X. All the X's to one side. It's a, a plus X. So I'm going to subtract X to both sides. When I do that, that turns to 0. 4x minus 1x is 3x. Uh, need to get rid of the 7 and the 3, right? Our goal is to get x by itself. Uh, get rid of a 7. You always take the add or subtract over first. Plus 7, plus 7. I'm left with 3x is less than 12. Uh, get rid of the 3. It's multiplying, so I'm going to divide both sides by 3. I divided. 3 divided by 3 is 1x, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. Don't forget, if you divide by a negative number, the arrow of the inequality changes direction. Here, we divided by a positive number, so it does not change direction. The answer is x is less than 4. Uh, a union B intersects C. If, if remember, this was union and this was intersect. So first we want A union B. Remember, union was a marriage. You take everything in A, everything in B, and put it into one set. A union B, I'm going to put it, uh, let me put it over here. I'm going to put it into one set. So a, in A and B, I have a 1, I have a 2, I have a 3, I have a 4, I have a 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, and 11. Wow, that was a bigger set than I thought it was. So you put everything into the set. If you, you have two of one thing, you only put one into that set. So that's A union B. Next, we want to intersect. We want to intersect it with C. And C is 1, 3, 8, 11. Intersect means what's in common. So what's in common between these two sets? Uh, the ones are in common. The threes are in common. Um, this one does not have an eight, uh, but this one does. But the eights are not in common, uh, and the elevens are in common. So only the one, three, and eleven. So our new set is one, three, and eleven. Only what's in common with both sets. That's what an intersection is. That's what an intersection is. So this is my answer, 1, 3, 11. And if you, if you recognize some of these problems, they're very similar to the problems we've had on the, uh, the quizzes already this term. What is a rational number? A rational number is a number that can change into a fraction. Any number that can be changed into a fraction. Some examples, 1 half. 7 is rational because I can change it to a fraction, 7 over 1. Uh, pretty much any decimal number, 2.6, I can change to a fraction. 
uh, it's 2 and 6 over 10, which reduced is 2 and 3 fifths. Um, the square root of 64 is 8, so it can be changed to a fraction 8 over 1. Um, the square root of 5, if you put that in your calculator, you get a decimal number that goes on forever. So this is not rational. Rational numbers are numbers that can be changed to a fraction. A whole number or a fraction or a decimal that stops and doesn't repeat. That's what a rational number is. What is the solution? Uh, we just had this last, last week. The solution is the point where the two lines cross. That is the solution. And let's just say I put this one, two, three, four, one, two. Do you see this solution would be x is four, y is two. This is the, the solution is where two lines cross. The solution is where two lines cross. Um, adult movie tickets cost ten dollars. Students cost four fifty. If four hundred fifty tickets are purchased for the cost of three thousand six hundred seventy-five, what are the correct equations to solve? So this was just like the quiz. They don't want you to write the answer. They don't want you to calculate the answer. They want you to just write the two sets. So adult movie tickets and student mo movie tickets. Um. Adult movie tickets cost ten dollars. Student tickets cost four fifty. We had four hundred fifty tickets sold. So the number of adult plus the number of students. Do you see the number of adult tickets plus the number of student tickets added up to four hundred and fifty? Now each adult ticket costs ten dollars. Ten dollars times the adult number of adults plus four fifty times the number of student tickets when that adds up you get three six seven five so they just wanted you to write the equation and we had one very similar to this uh, for one class I think I added I did the math and showed you how to solve this now using substitution I mean using the elimination method but you don't have to solve it all you have to do is write these two equations the first equation is going to be remember the for the quiz it was the amount of money in account A plus the amount of money in account B added to the total amount. The number of adult tickets sold plus the number of student tickets sold added up to 450. Do you see 450 tickets were purchased all together? We don't know how many adult, how many students, so the adults plus the students added up to 450. Then we had 10 times the number of adult tickets plus $4.50 times the number of students add up to 3,675. And so these, this is our answer. You write the two equations. You can solve this using the elimination method. And they actually don't want you to solve this in this, uh, in this situation. They just wanted you to write the equation now. Okay, we're solving for x. When you have two inequalities in solving for x, you want to keep x in the middle. You want to keep x in the middle. So I need to get rid of the 10 and the negative 2. First, I'm going to get rid of the 10. I have to add 10 to both sides, except it's a minus 10, so I'm going to add 10. But here we have two inequalities, so you have to add 10 to all three, left, middle, and uh, right. 10 minus 10 here is 0. I am left with a negative 8 and a plus 10 is 2. Uh, 14 plus 10 on the outside is 24. So this is what I have so far after I added 10. Next, I need to divide by a negative 2. I need to, I need to get x by itself in the middle. When you have an inequality like this, you need x by itself in the middle. So I'm going to divide by a negative 2. I want to get rid of this negative 2 in the middle. So I'm going to divide everything by negative 2. Ne 2 divided by negative 2 is a negative 1. 
uh, negative 2 divided by negative 2, negative divided by negative is a positive x, and 24 divided by negative 2 is a negative 12. Now, you have to be careful here. When you divide by a negative number in inequality, when a later, l l less than or greater than symbol, you when you divide by a negative number, you change the direction of the inequality. So I went over that rule. So this is my answer. Uh, do you see how the arrow is pointing to the negative 12 and it's pointing to the x? Now, in reality, this is the answer. But normally, you have the smaller number on the left-hand side. Negative 12 is smaller than negative 1. So you could put the negative 12 and the negative 1 like this. But you have to have the arrow in the correct direction. The arrow is pointing to the negative 12. Do you see how it's pointing? And this arrow is pointing to the x. So we just switched the negative 12 and the negative 1. And the arrows also switched like this. Either one of these is correct. I don't know which way it's going to be on the midterm. But you have to know that either one of those are correct. I would pick the bottom one since the smaller number is on the left-hand side. Write the system for this equation. Uh, write the system for... Uh, I'm not sure what they want us to do. This is a system. <laughs> um, I'm going to skip this because I don't know what I wanted on this one. <laughs> it says write the system. Uh, the system of equations. We have the system. Unless they want us to put this in standard form. Uh... Uh, and I'm, that's what I'm going to say. The system of equations, they want us to put it in standard form. So the top, you see how we have a common denominator of 2? So I'm going to multiply everything by 2. So I'm going to put everything in standard form. Multiply by 2. Uh, I end up with 2 times y is 2y. Uh, the 2's here cancel, and I left with 1x, which is just x. Well, you could write 1x or just x. And then 2 times 4 is 8. You see, I multiplied everything by the common denominator 2. I'm going to do the same thing to this bottom. I'm going to multiply everything by 3. The common denominator is 3. 3 times y is 3y. Three, 3 times a negative 2. The 3's cancel, so I'm left with a negative 2x. And 3 times 3 is 9. Uh, the only thing now is to get the x's to the uh, same side, so we, we have the x's and y's in standard form. Uh, take the x to the left-hand side by uh, the top. We're going to subtract x. Subtract x. So on the top one, I got negative x plus 2y uh, is less than 8. On the bottom one, when I bring the two, negative 2 over, I'm adding 2x. I'm adding 2x, so I get 2x uh, plus 3y is less than 9. You see, I just added 2x to both sides. I added 2x to both sides. That canceled, and I'm left with 2x minus or plus 3y is less than 9. So this, this is my system now. Do you see? I can actually put it in a matrix form. It doesn't have to be in standard form, I don't believe. I think it's okay to have a minus here. It doesn't say standard form. They want a system. So they wanted the x and y's on one side like this. I'm almost certain this is what the problem's asking. Um, put a little question mark by that. Uh, I'd have to look at the, 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 the test to take a look at it again. And verify. Um, so here's the problem. The problem is 2a minus 3b plus 5 all divided by 6. But they're telling us a is 4 and b is negative 2. So I'm going to rewrite this 2 times a minus this is called evaluate. 2 times a minus 3 times b plus 5 all divided by 6. So I'm going to plug A and B in. A is 4. 
So we put a 4 where the A goes. B is negative 2. We put a negative 2 there. And we do the math. 2 times 4 is 8. Negative 3 times negative 2. Negative times a negative is a positive. Uh, that's what I get on top. This is what I get on the bottom. Add the top. 8 and 6 is 14. 14 and 5 is 19 over 6. And my answer is done. It does not reduce. We are done. So this problem, you just plug A into the A spot, B into the B spot, do the math, and you're done. Solve for X. Uh, just trying to get X by itself, so I need to get rid of the 6 and the negative 7. You always take the add and subtract to the other side. It's a plus 6, so I'm going to minus 6. 6 minus 6 cancels, turn to 0. I'm left with negative 7x is greater than 14 minus 6 is 8. Uh, next, I need to get rid of the negative 7. It's a negative 7 times, so I'm going to divide by negative 7. Divide by negative 7. Negative 7 divided by negative 7 is a positive 1x. And 8 divided by negative 7 is a negative 8 over 7. You can't do anything with that. Don't change it to a decimal. Now, once again, we divided by a negative number. When you divide by a negative number and you have an inequality, you have to change its direction. Do you see it was pointing to the right? Now it's pointing to the left. When you div Only when you divide by a negative number, if you're dealing with a greater than or less than symbol, you have to change the direction of the sign. Which inequality? Oh, they just want to know. They want to know what this looks like in a graph. So I'm going to graph this and show you. Um, th uh, this is the y-intercept. One, two, three. Uh, a slope is two thirds. Up two over three. Up two over three. And then I'm going to graph this. Now this has. A, a less than or equal symbol. This is y is less than or equal to 2 thirds x. You see the slope is 2 thirds plus 3. The y-intercept is 3. Um, and here's my graph. Since I have an equal sign, it's a solid line. If it was not an equal sign, it'd be a dashed line, right? Um, y is less than. So here's the y-axis going up or down. It says y is less Y is less means you have to shade below the Y. Y is less. The Y goes up or down. If it's less than, we shade in the less side. Okay. There's just so many of these. I apologize if I'm going so fast. It's a great thing about this. It's being recorded. Uh, but there's just tons of these. Okay, we need to get, we want to solve this solve for x here uh we want to get the absolute value by itself so i need to get rid of this three and this minus three the the first three is multiplying the negative th minus three is subtracting so you always take the add and subtracts over to the other side first plus three plus three that's gone i am left with three times x plus four absolute value of x plus four equals 9. 6 plus 3 is 9. Now I need to get rid of this 3. It's 3 times, so I'm going to divide both sides by 3. Divide both sides by 3. These cancel. And I'm left with the absolute value. And we'll put it over here. I'm left with the absolute value of x plus 4 equals 3. Now, this is the problem we start with. You have to get the absolute value by itself. Now it branches off into two problems, remember? The first one, x plus 3 equals 3. You write it down as exactly as you see it. The second one, x plus 3 equals, and then change its sign, negative 3. Do you see you change its sign on the second one? The first one you leave like it is. The second one you change the sign, uh, and then we solve for x. I just get this 3 to the other side, minus 3 minus 3. 
That turns to 0. So x equals 3 minus 3 is 0. One answer is x equals 0. The other answer, get that 3 to the other side by doing the opposite, subtracting 3. x equals 3. A negative 3 and a negative 3 is a negative 6. There are my two answers, x equals 0 and x equals negative 6. I think we got about 11 more. Hang in there. Uh, find F3 plus G2. So F3 is, this means X. X is negative 3. You see, there's an equal sign here. So we're going to plug for the function F. We're going to plug a negative 3 into the X. So this is, at function f is x plus 5. You know, that f of x doesn't mean anything. That just tells us the function. Uh, so we're going to plug negative 3 in here. Negative 3 plus 5. We put the negative 3 into the x. Negative 3 plus 5 is a positive 2. That's the first function. Then we're going to add it to the section, second function. We're going to put a negative 2 into the x for the g. Uh, the absolute value, put a negative 2 in there, and then it's negative 2, it's x minus 2. Negative 2, negative 2 is the negative 4. The absolute value of negative 4 is a positive 4. So we're left with a 2 for the first function, a 4 for the second function, 2 plus 4 is 6. My final answer is 6. I hope you're recognizing these problems. These are all very similar to problems we've had on quizzes before. Very similar. Simplify. So we're not solving for x. We're just doing all the math possible now. Simplify. We're just doing all the math. Here, first we're going to distribute. And we have another number outside of a parenthesis. We're distributing that. So the first one, negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times a positive 2 is a negative 6. 5 times x is a positive 5x. 5 times a negative 5 is a negative 25. Okay, so there's no equal sign here. We're simplifying. We distributed. Now we're going to combine terms. Combine x's. Negative 3 and a positive 5. Negative 3 plus 5 is a positive 2x. A minus 6 and a minus 25 is a minus 31. We're done. There's nothing else. We're not finding x. It doesn't tell us to solve. I know we're not finding x because there's not an equal sign in the problem. All we're doing is distributing and combining like terms. What does x equal? Okay, so we have three equations with three unknowns. We have to find out what x equals. I'm looking for an equation that I could I could cancel out. either the X's or the Y's and I'm looking I'm looking oh I found it I found it wait no I didn't find it okay what does X equal if I multiply the bottom by 2 all right, multiply the top by bottom by negative 2. Give me a second. If I cancel the y's, Okay, so this is a long process. Um, here we go. This is the only way we can do this is solve using the elimin uh, solve using the elimination process. 
I uh, was looking for an easy way out of this. I don't see an easy way out. If I put a three there and a two there, I do not see an easy way out of this. I'm wondering if I wrote the problem down wrong. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take these first two equations and then just add them going down. Do you see? I'm going to add 2x plus 2x. I don't want to make too many marks on here. Um, so I'm going to take the first two equations. I'll put them over here. Uh, 2x plus y plus z. If you remember, uh, uh oh, now I'm having a hard time writing. That that's an equals 11, by the way. Uh, and then I'm going to take 2x minus y minus 2z equals a negative 7. If I take these two equations and add them, uh, 2x and 2x is 4x. y minus y turned to 0. And 1z minus 2z is a minus 1z, right? 1 minus 2 is a negative 1z. That's a z. 11 minus 7 is 4. So I took two equations and I, and I got rid of the y. So now I want to take two more equations and get rid of the y. Two more equations and get rid of the y. Um, so I'm going to take the bottom two equations. First, I took the top two. Now I'm taking the bottom two equations. So, oh, God. I just erased everything I did. There's no way of bringing that back, is there? Okay. Let me write it down again real quick. I added those two together, and I got 4x minus z equals 4. 11 minus 7 is 4. Okay, so I added those two together going down, and that's what I got. Now I'm going to add these two together, but before I add those two together, I'm going to multiply this top row by 2. Now, why am I multiplying the top row by 2? Because if I put a 2 here, do you see how the y's will disappear? I made the y's disappear in the first equation. So I have to make the y's disappear on the second uh, two that I pick also. You have to make the same uh, letter disappear. So I'm going to multiply uh, this top row here by 2. 2 times 2x is 4x. 2 times a negative y is a negative 2y. 2 times a negative 2z is a negative 4z. There's really not an easier way to do this. 2 times a negative 7 is a negative 14. Uh, the bottom row is going to stay the same. x plus 2y plus 3z equals 20. Now, if I add these two together, watch what happens. I'm going to change my color. 4x plus 1x is 5x. 2y, 2y cancels. A minus 2 and a plus 2. Negative 4z plus 3z is a plus 2z. No, it's not. It's a negative 4 plus 3 is a minus 1z. A minus 1z. So I don't need the 1 there. Minus 1z. And then negative 14 and 20 is a 6. Okay, so I have this equation and I have this equation. Um, do you see how I both have z's? I both have a, a negative z and a, ne a minus z. Uh, I have, take these two equations. They both have x and z's, x and z's. I'm going to take these two equations, 4x minus z equals 4. 
And the bottom one, 5x minus z equals 6. They both say minus z, but one has to be positive, one has to be negative. So when I add them, when I add them, they turn to 0. So I'm going to just multiply this top row by negative 1. Negative 1 times all of this. Negative 1 times 4 is a negative 4x. Negative 1 times a negative z is a positive z. Negative 1 times 4 equals a negative 4. I'm going to bring down the bottom row, 5x minus z equals 6. Now when I add these, do you see how the z's cancel? Negative 4x plus 5x is 1x. And negative 4 plus 6 is a positive 2. My answer here is x equals a positive 2. Do you see? Negative 4x plus 5x is 1x. And then negative 4 and 6 is 2. It says what does x equal? In this case, x equals 2. That was a that was a that was a difficult one. If you remember in the quiz that we had before, they gave us x, y, and z. They gave us all three, and we plugged them into all three equations to see if they worked. I don't know if that's going to be like this on the, on this midterm because I think they're just going to give you the answer to x, not all three. You see, so you couldn't plug them in. You have to use uh, a system of equations using substitution or elimination, and I used elimination. Uh, first, I eliminated the y's. Then, you know, first I eliminated the y's. You see the y's are missing. Then I eliminated the z's, and we're left with just the x. A lot of work on that problem. That's, that's a tough one. Okay, here's a problem where we're just going to do the order of operations. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Do what's inside the parentheses first. 4 minus 7 is a negative 3. We do what's inside the parentheses. I'm going to bring everything else down. Uh, parentheses, please excuse. Do powers next. Negative 3 to the second power. Negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9. Uh, this is 8 minus 3. And this 3 next to the parentheses means times. Uh, so we did parentheses. We did exponents, which are powers. Now we're doing multiply or divide. So we do the multiply and divide before the subtraction. 3 times 9 is 27. And then we just subtract. 8 minus 27 is a negative 19. And there's our answer. So making sure uh, multiply and divide and then add and subtract from left to right. Don't forget you do these from left to right. You have to use the order of operations. Solve for y. Uh, once again, I recognize this problem. Uh, the goal is to get y here, get rid of the 3x, and get rid of the 9. You always take the add and subtract to the other side first. The 9 is multiplying. The 3x is adding to the side. So we're going to subtract the 3x to both sides first. These turn to 0. I'm left with 9y equals negative 3x plus 7. Okay, I need to get rid of the 9 now. It's multiplying times the y, so I'm going to divide each term by 9. Divide by 9, divide by 9, divide by 9. 9 divided by 9 is 1y. 3 divided by 9, it actually reduces. They both divide by 3, and I get negative 1 over 9 times x, or negative 1 over 3. You see, I divided them both top and bottom by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So it's negative 1 third x uh, plus 7 over 9. That does not reduce. So we are done. We solve for y. We got y on one side, everything else to the other. Uh, find the equation for the line. Once again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If that was 6, then y equals mx plus b. My b, my y-intercept would be 6. Do you see how that would be 6? Sorry, my b's look like 6's. Uh, if that was y6, then the y-intercept is 6. Now you have to find two points and do a rise and a run. We know, do you see how this slope goes down? We know this slope 
is going to be a negative slope because the slope going down from left to right is negative. You pick two points that you clearly understand and see how much it goes down. Okay, it went down six spots and it went over to the right five spots. So this is a negative six over five slope. That's how you pick two good spots that are clear. So let's say this point, this point, we go down five over six. I know it's a negative slope, so it's a negative. The top part for the slope, the top part is going up or down, the change in Y. The bottom part is going right or left. So if we started here and we go to here, we went down six, down six, and then to the right five. So this is my equation. My y-intercept is six. My slope is negative six over five. Solve. Um, this is an absolute value. The arrow's pointing away. When the arrow points away, we're going to set up this problem two different ways. When the arrow points away from the absolute value, the first way is keep it exactly as you see it. You see everything's the same except the absolute value. The second equation, the one-third x minus 5. Then we change the direction of the absolute value and change the sign of the 2. It's now a negative 2 and the arrow points the opposite direction. <clears throat> and we're going to solve for x. Okay, now we're going to solve for x. So I want to get the 1 third to the other side and the 5. You always take the add and subtract to the other side first. I'm going to add 5, add 5, 5 minus 5 is 0, I am left with 1 third x, and 2 plus 5 is 7. Okay, now i got to get the 1 third to the other side. The easiest way is multiply by something that's going to cancel it out by 3. Just because the 3 is on top and the 1 third, the 3 is on the bottom there. These two cancel, and I'm just left with x. And 7 times 3 is 21. So x is greater than 21. That's one answer. The other answer, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add 5 to both sides. That cancels. I'm left with 1 third x. 3. I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 to get rid of the 1 third. That cancels with this. I'm left with x. x is less than or equal to 9. And there's my answer. x is greater than 21 or x is less than 9. Okay, looks like we got about five more. So we've done one of these already. Absolute value equals, we're going to split it into two equations. 6x plus 8 equals 14. And 6x plus 8 equals negative 14. Do you see the first one exactly as you see it? The second one, you change the sign. And then you solve for x. So you're going to take the 8 and the 6 over to both sides. I'm not going to do it. We just did one of these a few problems back. And you solve for x and you're going to end up with two answers. 1. I think this is going to be x equals 1. You guys can verify this. <laughs> and this one is going to be x equals negative 22 over 6, which reduces to negative 11 over 3. You guys verify that. See if that's right. It might not be right. You tell me. <laughs> okay. If, a, if, if it cost me 545 to repair a car, 275 plus parts, and $45 an hour, how long did it take to fix the, my car? Okay. So they charge you. It cost me 
$545, okay? So that's how much it equals, $545. Now, it cost me $275 for parts and $45 per hour plus $45 every hour they worked on my car. And I'm calling hour H. Do you see? 45, if it was two hours, they do 45 times two, $90. If it was three hours, they do 45 times three. Four hours, 45 times four. So it cost 545, 275 for parts, and $45 every hour they worked on it. The question is, if I paid 545, how many hours? What does H equal? We're just solving. We're getting these two, the 275 and the 45 to the other side. You always take the add and subtract to the other side first, so let's do that. Minus 275. So we're going to take 545 minus 275. 545 minus 275, and I get $270. Equals 45 times H hours. Get the 45 over. It's multiplied. So we have to divide both sides by 45. Divide by 45. Divide by 45. And that cancels to 1H. And 270 divided by 45. Equals 6 hours. So they worked on my car for 6 hours. 275 was parts, and 45 times 6 hours was the labor. Okay, so you had to set this up like this and then solve for H. Solve uh, for X, get the 4 over to the other side, get the 5 over. Take the add and subtract over first, plus 4, plus 4. We're left with 5X equals 20. 16 plus 4 is 20. And then get rid of the 5. It's 5 times, so we're going to divide both sides by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1x. 20 divided by 5 is 4. These last problems are always a little bit easier, hopefully. <laughs> find the slope. I'm not going to find it for you. Oh, maybe I will. y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Remember the formula if you have two points. Uh, 9 minus 7, y2 minus y1, x2, 1 minus 4. So I get 9 minus 7, which is 2, and 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. So the answer is negative 2 thirds. So try that out. You should get negative 2 thirds. And the last problem, solve for x. Get all the x's to one side first. I'm going to take the 2x over minus 2x. Do you see you have to get the x's to one side to solve for x? That turns to 0. 4x minus 2x is 2x. I'm left with the 7. And on the right hand side, I have 15. Get the 7 to the other side and get the 2 to the other side. Always take the add and subtract the other side first. Minus 7, minus 7. That turns to 0, left with 2x equals 8. Uh, get the 2 to the other side by dividing by 2, dividing by 2. And I get x equals 8 divided by 2 is 4. And there we have it. Uh, that is the, <laughs> the midterm. Now, I took one hour. You have two hours to do this midterm. I took exactly one hour, 59 minutes right now, one hour to do this midterm. Um, you have two hours. Uh, I really recommend practicing these problems, taking good notes, uh, and then uh, your midterm will look very similar to this. I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm hoping that this help video will help you through it. Uh, Call me if you guys have any questions at all. You guys have a great week.